We're now joined by Greta Thunberg. She has been named one of Time Magazine's most influential teens of 2018. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Greta. It's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you for having me here. Mm. So you sat outside the Swedish parliament in September every day when all the other kids were in school. What made you decide to go to the Swedish parliament? Well, it started with a couple of youth in the United States uh, refused to go to school because of the school shootings. And then someone I knew said, what if children did that for the climate? And then I thought... Oh, you're talking about the Parkland students the, oh, in Parkland, yeah. Florida, after the massacre there, Valentine's Day. And then I thought that that was a good idea, that maybe it would make a difference. And then I tried to bring people with me, but no one was really interested, so I had to do it alone. And but so then, you just... The second day, people started joining me. Why climate change? Why is that so important to you? Because what we do now, future generations can't undo in the future. We are deciding right now how we want our future to look like. And when did you decide climate change was the issue you wanted to devote your life to? Uh, I mean, I, I have read uh, a lot of, about it, and I, one thing that I found uh, very scary is tipping points. That once we, once we reach tipping points, then there's no going back. Then we start a chain reaction beyond our control, and that is very scary. And so that I, I thought instead of worrying about how our future might turn out, you should try to change it while you still can. So that's what I wanted to do. So how have you changed your life once you started to learn about climate change? Uh, I personally have uh, stopped flying. I have stopped eating meat and dairy. I have. Uh, so let's take these one at a time. You stopped flying. So how did you get here to Poland? You live in Sweden. Yeah, we went here by electrical car. How long did it take you to drive here? Uh, two days, including one night at a hotel. Mm -hmm. And why did you stop eating meat? Both of ethical reasons and by ecological reasons. And what else have you done? Uh, I have a shop stop. It means that you uh, don't buy things, new things, unless it's absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. Talk about what you're wearing, your sweatshirt today. Oh, uh, this is uh, a shirt from uh, Hundar utan hem, Dogs Without Home, uh, a Swedish organization with, which give homeless dogs home. Do you have dogs? Yes, I have two dogs. One is from there. One is from that shelter? Yeah. Uh -huh. So how do you feel being here at the UN Climate Summit? How long have you studied the issue? I, uh, we arrived here uh, last Saturday, so uh, more, a little bit more than a week now we've been here. And I started uh, reading about the climate crisis when I was maybe nine years old in school. Uh, my teachers, they told me about it and I thought that it was very strange that humans, who are an animal species among others, could be capable of changing the Earth's climate. Because if that was the case and if it was really happening, we wouldn't be talking about anything else. But that would be our first priority. But no one ever even mentions it. So I started reading about it. And the more I read about it, the more I understood it. And once you fully understand what it means, you can never go back. Hmm. So it's interesting you are sitting in front of the Swedish parliament every day for three weeks, considering most people think of Sweden as one of the most progressive when it comes to climate change. Mm. Yeah. We have, uh, this, uh, we have a reputation of being very, very green. But uh, we, Sweden is one of the top 10 countries in the world with the highest ecological footprints per capita. And we have uh, very high emissions per capita. And so we are not a role model. The emissions have actually gone up in the last yeah, year? Yeah, we have, we have just moved them overseas. Our uh, actual com uh, emissions in the country ha uh, may have reduced, but 
we have just moved our emissions overseas. We let other countries hmm. produce the stuff we consume. Greta, how do you explain climate change to other kids? Uh, it depends on how old they are. But that we need to change now because we are living we are not living within the planetary boundaries and we we are risking future generations future by continuing like this we need to change ourselves now because tomorrow it might be too late what did the swedish parliamentarians say as they would pass you each day going up the stairs and down the stairs uh, most of them ignored me and then some of them came up to me and said that you're doing a good job, but very few. So it started, you started getting a lot of attention. Yeah. Did people bring you food? Some. Oh, Did some that people. change what you ate? No. Greta is staying with us for the hour, 15-year-old climate activist who came to the UN Climate Summit, where we're broadcasting today, in Katowice, Poland, with her dad, Svante, who is an actor in Sweden, uh, her, their, her mother, an opera singer. Uh, they came by electric car over two days because she refuses to fly. She sat down in front of the Swedish parliament for three weeks in September, not going to school. After the Swedish elections, she went to school four days a week and continued her sit in every Friday. Um, Greta, uh, thanks for staying with us. Svante Thunberg is also joining us right now. Svante, how has your daughter changed you? All in every possible way, I'd say. Um, it started maybe four years ago. She um, was very uh, sort of, um, she got herself in a position where, where, where she was learning a lot about the climate change. And she was finding out that everyone was saying one thing and doing the exact other thing. And that she could not cope with. So uh, she fell into a depression. She stopped eating, stopped talking, and she fell out of school and stayed at home for almost a year. And uh, my wife and I sort of, we stayed at home with her, of course, and we did everything. I stopped working completely and we spent you know, all our time with her. Now, you are, you're a well-known actor, your wife is a well-known opera singer, and yeah. you both I, gave up your professions. Yes, my wife is much more well-known than I am. I gave up my career when she was born, actually, because my wife was working overseas. So I basically... Uh, housewife. Yeah, I, I went to become a housewife instead. <laughs> so, uh, um, but and, I do act sometimes. And but, you have two daughters. Yes, we have two daughters. Beata as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Greta, can you talk about that time? It sounds extremely painful, a few years ago when you stopped talking and stopped eating. Yes, I, I, I became very depressed. I fell into depression and I... I mean, I didn't... I didn't uh, think that it was... Uh, I was uh, so depressed, I didn't see any point of living because everything was just so wrong and I kind of saw because I have Asperger's syndrome so I work a bit different I see things black and white and so I guess I saw the world from a different perspective so I saw what was wrong with the world and I what does it mean to have Asperger's syndrome that I my brain works a bit different and I I usually don't enjoy participating in the social game that the rest of you seem so fond of. And I don't like lying, and I see things black or white. And you focus with laser intensity on an issue. Yeah. Your issue, climate change. And Svante, what did this mean for you? How have you raised your daughters um, to deal with the world? and? in this crisis when Greta stopped eating and was almost hospitalized. Yeah, she, she, uh, she made us realize that we were these parents, you know, standing up for human rights and refugees and right and wrong and all these things. And we were really fighting for that. And then she said, you know, whose human rights are you standing up for, you know? When my wife, for instance, went to Japan to make concerts and being on Japanese TV, you know, very important. You know, it's a good reason to travel across the world to do that. 
But when she got home, you know, Greta sort of worked out how much, how many tons of uh, carbon dioxide she had spent on that and how many people's carbon budget that was living in West Africa, for instance. So uh, she basically, uh, you know, confronted us with that. You know, wh whose human rights are you standing up for? When you are draining the world's, you know, resources, a functioning atmosphere, for instance, um, you know, and so we basically realized in the end after a couple of years of, of, of her going on about it that we had to change, you know, we had to stop, stop doing these things. And, and, and that really had an enormous effect because she made a, her much more happy and she changed a lot with that. So, um, yeah. So, what made you decide to start eating again and start talking? Greta. I mean, I guess I, I thought that I could do so much with my life. I can, and what is the point of feeling like this when I could actually do something good? And so, yeah. Is your sister older or younger than you? She's uh, three years younger than me. Mm -hmm. And how sh has she been affected by your choices? I mean, she has also stopped flying and so on, and she she also cares about the climate and the environment. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. And how has it changed the way you parent, Svante? Well, it changed. My wife had, she gave up her international opera career and she's working out of Sweden now instead. And that was a big change for us. Uh, and obviously it's changed a great many other sort of things. Uh, I had to go vegan, first of all, vegetarian, then I had to go vegan. And, and I do miss the cheese, I have to, <laughs> I must confess. But it's, uh, no, I mean. So what did it mean to you to give up meat and then, nothing and then cheese and dairy? Nothing, it meant nothing. I mean, in the end, you know, we're facing a, 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 you know, a diet catastrophe and, uh, but and I just didn't realize. I, we well, asked Greta in the first segment mm -hmm. why she became a vegetarian. And yeah. Are you a vegan also, Greta? Yeah. Um, so Svante, what? does that mean to you? Well, Why it, not have a meat-based diet? Well, because of the climate crisis. I mean, obviously, we are running out of a budget, okay? I mean, the budget is disappearing before our eyes, and we only have a couple of years, less than a couple of years, to bend the curve, you know, steep, steep down like a roller coaster. And um, I think I didn't, have a, I didn't have a clue about the climate crisis before, before she got us all interested in this. And, but once you start, you know, walking down that path, there's no going back and it changes your, comp I mean your life is changed in every possible way once you realize, you know, the situation that we're actually in. But I was so amazed that I wasn't aware of it, you know, because I, I was, you know, very aware. I was reading all the papers and stuff and I just didn't realize where we were at. Well, yeah. What did it mean to you that your parents became vegan? Is your mother also a vegan, Greta? Yeah, she tries. <laughs> You're teaching her. <laughs> so what did that mean to you, how you changed your parents? I mean, that me meant that they were actually listening to what I was saying. And I mean, that was good to feel that someone is listening. You know, Svante, you talked about basically climate equity, mm -hmm. about how when you consume a lot, um, when uh, the Western countries like Sweden are engaged in fossil fuel pollution, yeah. what that means for the developing world. Yeah. Um, Greta, I'd like to ask you that question, this whole issue of climate equity. Yeah, I mean, since uh, we have a uh, higher emissions per capita, we must reduce emissions more. And since we already have all the infrastructure and everything that we need, we need to reduce our emissions much more so that the developing countries can have a chance to build some of that infrastructure and so that the people there can have a chance to heighten their standard of living. Mm -hmm. Also the effects of climate change yeah, that, uh, of on other countries that yeah. can least afford to um, cope with the change. Um, we're talking with uh, Svante and Greta Thunberg. Can you talk about your 
um, relatives. You are both the descendants of Svante Arrhenius, the Nobel Prize winning scientist who first calculated the greenhouse effect caused by carbon dioxide emissions in 1896, known to some as the father of climate change science. Svante, you were named after him? Yes, I was. My family would name me after him, or my father did, because he thought, you know, that was very important. But the fact is, they didn't have a clue why he got the Nobel Prize. They are, you know, he was just a Nobel just Prize winner. Yeah, it's nice. pretty nice, you know, nice title. So he's, uh, my father's born in 1925, he's pretty old, and his grandmother's cousin, I think, is Svante Arrhenius. So, um, the, yeah, it runs in the family. I was, um, you know, I didn't realize uh, until I started reading up on the subject, but yeah, that's our relative. Yeah. Hmm. And Greta, you are now, when you're not here at the UN Climate Summit, by the way, I want to point out, um, uh, we're in this building here uh, in uh, Katowice, the main conference center of, of this city that is actually shaped like a coal mine. You know, everywhere around us it's, uh, is black and you sort of descend down. I, I don't know if you were aware of that. Also, right by the Poland exhibit, uh, which is called Black to Green, did you see this are necklaces that have made out of coal hearts. There's coal soap. It's soap in the shape of coal. Uh, maybe kind of celebrating coal. Uh, very interesting when we came to the Warsaw Summit, and it's the only country that has hosted the UN Climate Summit three times. Um, uh, it hosted it in Poznan, then in Warsaw, and now we're in Katowice. Katowice, the heart of coal country in Poland. Uh, the coal company is clearly very prominent here. Your thoughts on that and what coal means for the world? I mean, it's just crazy that we are here on the climate change conference and it's, I think it's sponsored by a coal company. And, but I, we need to stop burning coal as simple as that. You are protesting every Friday outside the Swedish parliament now from every weekday to just Fridays. Why Fridays? Why not? <laughs> Fridays are, are good days. Friday's a good day to strike. <laughs> you call it a school strike. You've also been following and tweeting about other school strikes around the world. Yeah. How many have there been? Oh, I, I don't know many. Uh, Tens of thousands of kids in Australia, uh, also strikes in uh, Belgium, Canada, the US, uh, the UK, uh, Finland, Denmark, Sweden, uh, France, uh, the Netherlands. Uh, I probably forgot something now, but yeah, it's a lot of places. So Greta, I'd like you to stay with us for the hour, and then um, we are also going to be joined by the well-known climate scientist, Kevin Anderson. Um, we're talking with 15-year-old climate activist um, Greta Thunberg, uh, here with her father, Svante. Svante, thanks so much for joining us and for bringing Greta here. Thank you so much. Greta, by the way, who addressed the world here at the UN Climate Summit. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back with Greta Thunberg and Kevin Anderson in a moment.